That was at night, yeah, yeah. Like middle of night kind of thing. When Jim Post and his wife Jackie rented the top two floors of a big Southington colonial in 1995, they had no idea of its reputation as a haunted house or of the history that would one day make it the subject of a horror film called The Haunting in Connecticut. As fate would have it, they found out on Halloween when Jim asked the first floor tenant if he wanted to share trick-or-treating. He just looked at me and said, well, we just don't do Halloween anymore because it got too weird. You know what I mean? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, people would come from all over and they were lined up down the sidewalk, down the road, wanting to get in. Later, Jim says that neighbor showed him a tabloid that listed the top haunted houses in the world. And there's a picture of the front of the house that I just moved into. It looks like a house out of a Norman Rockwell painting. Strange things began to happen right away. Not terrifying things, things that occasionally happen to all of us, but seem to happen a lot in this house. There was some missing keys, missing personal items. I looked for like a, an envelope that I had the mail and it wasn't there. An envelope with $500 cash inside went missing from a chest full of sweaters and other items. They turned it inside out looking for that money, Jim says, but it was gone. And there were stranger things. I had some friends coming over to visit me. We were going to go out that evening. And I'm in the shower, and um, I hear them bound. I hear the car pull up. I hear them bound up the stairs. And they start talking to me. And I said, hey, guys, I'm, I'm in the shower. Um, they said, okay, we're going to go get some food. We're going to go get some drinks. We'll be back in 10 minutes. I uh, got out of the shower, dried off, got dressed. I hear them pull in. They bound up the staircase, and they had the same exact conversation with me that was like 10 minutes earlier. He quizzed them about that conversation from 10 minutes earlier, and they were blank. And they said, what are you talking about? We just got here. Then there was the night Jackie saw her mother, who had passed away years earlier, hovering in a corner of their bedroom. She said she saw her kind of floating in the corner there, watching over, and then she recognized her uh, flannel nightgown that she always wore. Jim says he didn't see Jackie's mother. He just saw the curtains move for no reason. But the scariest story Jim has to tell actually happened to a friend who was helping him paint a room. One night that friend stayed behind alone to work while Jim and Jackie went out. He was painting um, and he just felt a presence. The back of his you know, hair on his neck went up, looked around, nobody's there. He started painting. Then he felt actually like pressure, something pushing him against the wall. He said he got out of there so fast, he ran down the stairs. He said he felt like he was going down an up escalator. Got in his car, pulled around. And he said the transformer exploded in the street. Still, Jim says the episodes he experienced were mischievous, even playful, but not malevolent. And he wouldn't necessarily call the house haunted. In my mind, there was definitely some spiritual energy. Um, but as far as, you know, evil things that we see in the movies, I would have to say no. And Jim's cousin, who was a medium, had a similar take, but with an interesting twist. She said, I'm picking up especially a female presence and she likes you and she points right at me, right? <laughs> and she said, I think she's trying to get you and your wife into a little bit of a tiff. So not only do we have a haunted house here, we got a love triangle. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I said, oh man, I don't know if I can't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Safe to say Jim ghosted that ghost. Uh, just a couple of postscripts here. First, that $500 that went missing turned up again five years and three moves later back in the same box with the same sweaters it disappeared from. And second, the tenant who moved into the house after Jim and Jackie Post moved out was a young Chris Murphy. Senator Murphy sent us a quick statement saying he what? wondered why the rent was so low when he moved in and he <laughs> added, quote, nothing ever happened to me on the second floor of that house. I've got nothing but good things to say about it.